Hello everyone, this is Brian Garvin, and today I'm gonna to talk about the seven most common mistakes that crypto newbies make. Um, I'm gonna start with volatility. The market, um, the cryptocurrency market actually has a natural wiggle to it, which means it's constantly going like this. So let's say for example, you have 35,000 in your account, and you refresh your page and it says 33,800 or something, just like that, and within a few seconds, that's a crazy, you know, wiggle and don't be don't worry about it at all i mean that's the way the natural crypto market works you want to invest long term especially you know maybe back in the day 10 years ago you could have probably traded a little bit and got away with it but at this point you don't want to do that because the market's volatile and the prices of crypto are rising and they're going to keep rising as time goes on um, i came i just heard about a bitcoin conference in tennessee and some of the bulls that are going to be at that conference are going to say, you know, eventually Bitcoin can go up to past a million to two to five or whatever million. Um, and right now, the prices, as I talked to you here, it was around it's around sixty eight thousand right now. Yesterday, it went it climbed up to seventy three, excuse me, seventy three thousand. So that's a big difference. And, you know, I look at my you know, I look at my portfolio and I lost like six grand, but you're not really losing it. You're just that's just a natural wiggle of the marketplace and you got to get used to that. If you can't get used to that, get used to that. I'm not going to tell you to get out of the market because that's not what I'm about. I'm about getting you in the market, helping you stack a lot of money and then, you know, just learning how things work out there. So just just trust me on this. Just hodl your Bitcoin or Ethereum and just keep it for at least, you know, two cycles. Um, the other thing too is I want to talk about dips and pullbacks. That's not just a natural book of the marketplace. That's like, for example, say one day the market's 73,000, then it goes to 68, and then it goes back up to 70, and then it just kind of goes back and forth between 68 and 70 for two weeks. And you're like, well, what happened? It was so high before. Don't worry about all that. Just, just keep it. Your plan should be to hodl, hold on for dear life, and keep it for at least eight years. So that's what I want you to, that's the mindset I want to get you involved with, you know, and to get you to adopt. Because if you do that, you're going to be successful in the crypto space. Okay. The other thing too is panic selling. I kind of covered that just now. I mean, you don't want to freak out when you see a wiggle or you, you know, Bitcoin hits an all-time high and then it, you know, maybe drops 15% for two months or something. Just so what? Just hold on to it. Whatever. That's actually a good time. I would actually take advantage of that time and add a little more money when, when the market's lower, you know. I personally, I, I put $53 a day into the space because that's, I'm, 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 I'm a disabled American veteran and I get so much per month and I'm able to allocate $53 a day. If I live frugally, which I'm doing right now, it, I'm able to do that. So take advantage of, of the dips to buy because you're going to get a better deal. And that's going to help you very much in the future when the price goes up. Think of Bitcoin like buying a piece of real estate. If you pay 68000 and, and you buy, say, $20,000 investment, you own you know, almost a third of a Bitcoin. When it goes up to a million, that sixty grand could easily be three hundred grand, or or the thirty grand I meant could easily be three hundred grand, or whatever. It's it's going to multiply your your funds based on how the price of Bitcoin. So I would I would stick to a plan. That's the biggest thing to, to be successful as industries to have a plan. Um, the the other thing too is I like to think of crypto like this. In in one aspect, you know, when it comes to the larger institutions and the small guys. They act like they're our friends because, you know, you could buy a Bitcoin ETF, but you're only going to get, um, I mean, a spot ETF through BlackRock or Fidelity or whatever. You're only going to get a one to three percent allocation in crypto. However, if you purchase, if you go through Coinbase and buy it, you're going to increase your profits by, you know, 20 fold as far as BTC is concerned or more because you purchased um, because because you're buying 100 percent Bitcoin. So that's the difference. You go through Coinbase to buy it because you're going to get a much better deal. And, and just so you'll know, Coinbase isn't paying me as an affiliate. They, they don't pay for referrals. I'm just doing this to help you. Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about is, is in the Bitcoin forum and then in the Coinbase forum, there's a lot of what they call FUDsters out there. FUD stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. You don't want to listen to anything they say because a lot of these people are negative on life in the first place. They don't understand the space very well. Um, because they're the kind of people that always pull their money out when there's an all-time high thinking they scored, you know, and they might have made, you know, 15 grand or something, but they're really screwing themselves in the long run because what happens when the price 
of Bitcoin is a million or a million and a half. So you come in with a decent amount, you know, whatever you can comfortably afford is what I tell people, um, you know, 15, 30 grand or whatever, and you just sit there, you're gonna be in a position to change your life. You might not be a multimillionaire or even a millionaire, but who cares? I mean, you're gonna have three, $400,000. You're gonna be able to pay all your bills off. The average American is in debt, every man, woman, and child on an average of $101,000 in the United States. So, you know, just do the math. I mean, just, just, just sit down, think about this logically, and just, just make a plan. A DCA is gonna help you stack a lot of cheese over the next three years if you're constantly putting in money into the space. Like for example, I put in $53 a day. I'm a disabled American veteran. And that's what I have discretionary to, to do the space. And I'm only able to do that because I live frugally. If I wasn't living frugally, I wouldn't pretty much have anything to do in the, you know, to put in the space. So the other thing I wanna to talk, to talk to you about is um, Initial coin offerings or ICOs. Those are basically startup crypto companies. And they, they tend to attract a lot of capital really fast. And I'm thinking to myself, why don't they just take that capital and put it into Bitcoin? It's 65,000 knowing it's gonna be a million in a couple of years. Because that they could lose all that money in a startup because you've got an 80% 80 of these crypto projects fail. In fact, to this date, 5,700 crypto projects have failed. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't mess with an ICO. Um, low cap coins, they're a gamble. But if you pick the right one, they can make you a lot of money. There, there's crypto influencers out there that all they do is talk about low caps. And there's people that base their entire business model off of low caps. And they, some of them do really well. Um, but once again, you have to be more technically proficient. And to sign up for a low cap, you usually have to go into some ex obscure exchange that isn't US friendly, then you have to kind of sneak in there and hope you can get your assets out. If, if you put $1,000 in and one day you, you did score pay dirt and you woke up and you had 40 grand, it happens occasionally. Um, but what if you can't get your assets out? What if that exchange says, sorry, you said you were, um, you know, I mean, how are you gonna get in there if you're not a US citizen? A lot of them just don't want US citizens. And if you fake it and say you're from somewhere else and you might not be able to get your coins out. So that's something I, I'm not technically proficient enough to do low caps. I don't recommend it. I, I plan on being a multimillionaire in this space by 2030, and I'm not. I might not touch them unless I can figure out a way in and, and it, it makes sense and it's safe and that kind of thing. Um, so that's just me. So, but I recommend that for you as well. Um, the other thing too. Oh, security. That's the last thing I want to cover in this video is security. Um, let me explain to you how to make a password. The first thing I do when I make a password is I take two words that are characteristic of the city I live in, then I slightly misspell them. I might transpose a couple characters or I might put something at the end. You could use your imagination to do this. This is two of the words of the four words that I use in a, in a password. The third word I use is a state that I do not live in, but something character, not the state itself, but something characteristic to that state, then I'll misspell that word a little bit, I'll transpose it. Then I'll take a fourth word, that'll be a random, any kind of random word, it doesn't matter, just, just pick something. Look around your room or something, or when you're out or whatever. Slightly misspell that. Now you got your four misspelled words in your password, right? Now the second thing you want to do is you want to pick, say, six numbers. Not your birth date, but six numbers. You know, and then you want to pick five special characters and put it at the very end. Whatever ones you want that that the you know that Coinbase will accept. I think they pretty much accept all of them. And then once that would be what you would do on the front part of your email address before the at sign. The second thing you would want to do is do the same thing, follow the same process to create your password, but you don't want the same string of characters. I mean that, you know, you just want to make it hard for, for scammers. If you do this, there will be, that's just that. And then I teach you 11 other tips to like, for example, you want on your um, iPhone and on your um, PC or laptop or whatever you use, you want to put a password for both of those. So if someone ever grabs a hold of your phone, they gotta get through your password. If someone gets a hold on your computer, before they get to your desktop, they gotta guess your password. You wanna make it so hard for them. And I have 11 tips and even a bonus tip that's a, one of them is just, will just make this insanely impossible for them to do this. If you implement security, it only takes a couple hours. It can take a bad actor. I mean, they could spend the rest of your life just trying to hack in your account. And, and, and they won't be able to do it. That's how 
good your security can be if you just spend a couple hours and get it all set up properly. So that's why I say, you know, just, just, just you could do that and then you could spend the rest of your life just, just not worrying about those kind of people because they're not gonna be able to make it into your account. And then you wanna take this, you know, the, your, you know, your password and your email and you wanna either write it offline or um, put it in a text file, um, but only save that text file to a USB that you have unconnected to your computer because if it's connected to your computer, technically, the chances are nil, but the, technically, if they have malware and you accidentally click a bad link, then it can, you know, if, you're, if your USB is plugged in, they can have access to that. I mean, the, ch the chances are one in a zillion, but you know, you, but you don't take any chances when, when it comes to security. I take security very seriously and I give you 11 tips in my manual that shows you how to implement the kind of security. So that, I'm gonna kind of wrap it up for this video and um, I'll, I'll think of some other alpha to give you in the next few days. But I just want you to have an incredible day. Relax about the crypto space. You know, you can enjoy profits from it the rest of your life. If you just implement what I tell you, how I tell you to implement it in the class that I give, it's free. I don't ask for a credit card. And we do want an email address so we can give you even more alpha in the future and, and more information. Because we want to fill your brain up with so much good information, you're just going to become an expert someday. And that's, that's my goal. But we start you off with the basics in that, in that course. It's, if you want to access it, it's, uh, it's uh, luckyinvestor.com forward slash crypto class. And I hope to see you on the other side once you learn all this great information and start implementing it. That's about it. Have an incredible day. Thank you.